What's up Troop? In today's video, we're gonna dive deep into Logic Pro and look at how you can sample, well, everything. What I'm gonna do is put together a beat idea using only samples and all in the quick sampler and sampler inside Logic. I'll show you a bunch of the different ways that we can utilize it and get different effects and processes all within sampling. It's gonna be a long one, but stay seated. There's gonna be plenty of learning. And a big thanks to DistroKid for being the sponsor of this video. A little bit more about them later in the video. Let's get into Logic. All right, so a quick explainer of what's going on here. Basically, I've gone through my sample library and I've picked out five samples to save me going back in and scanning through and all that boring tedious stuff I've selected the samples that I'm going to try and use to build something out here already you can see the names of all of them at the top so that you can go and grab them all if you want to they are all from splice I've purposely picked things that are in slightly different keys and slightly different BPMs so that we can look at how you deal with that and bring those sounds in tweak them and get them to work so one of the very first things that I want to do here is I'm going to set a BPM and I'm going to go 80 as you can see that snapped a bunch of the audio the very first thing I'm going to do is just show you a little time stretch and time manipulation trick before we go into quick sampler so let's make ourselves a new audio track little plus icon just up here we can do that we can do audio no input doesn't need it and we can just copy this down on here so we select it we hold option and drag down and then we've got a copy and I can mute this track so we don't run into it so what this should be is some kind of tops and perks pretty vibey uh, and towards the end it really goes out however the first like half bar is pretty much all I want so I'm just going to take uh, this at the bottom here on the smart corner and jump right the way down to there and we're going to zoom in to make sure it didn't snap anywhere stupid and it did so we're just going to bring that right into the right point if it's doing for you what it's doing here it's because it's on smart snapping and zero crossing um, what you can do is the more you zoom in the closer it will let you get and put yourself a little fade in at the end just like that now if we press u it's going to loop over that for one bar we just want to bring that down so we've got half the bar and now we've got it's kind of off time and off beat for what we're after though right so if we select it and we go to this little icon up here or we can press command and f that's going to give us our flex options here on our channel and what we want for this we want to do flex time slicing and it's going to give us a slightly different view now now if we make sure we've got our inspector open on the left hand side press i to bring that up if you do not when this is selected we can use the quantize value and we can do say one over over eighth notes and you'll see that will snap to one eighth notes now and we'll have a, something a little bit Yeah, still kind of a bit wobbly and we can see what it's going to be and um, we could maybe take this phrase and bring it back or we can make it come forward a touch onto here and we can see a couple of little things like here for example we don't necessarily need that so we can double click that and we can put a new marker in here and we could bring that on and we could bring you say into a midpoint like so and that's kind of a cool rhythm and that's just one way you can work with rhythmic things really really quickly and simply and well we've changed the whole rhythm of that completely and done it very quickly and pretty seamlessly without having to open up any other plugins just a cool way to work I use that loads especially if we're doing like sample drum and bass and bringing stuff up in tempo now let's say we want to bring the same thing in and we want to chop it up for its individual sounds well let's grab our sound again we drag it down to a new lane and bring it all the way over to the left hand side it'll give us some options here quick sampler is going to be all we really need for the time being so we'll drop it in quick sampler and it's going to open up a brand new channel for us with the audio already in already chopped up now we've listened to this we've established we don't need the whole lot it kind of just repeats the same sounds but towards the end it's got some more dynamic ones so we can use this marker just here and bring ourselves all the way up to say here or even here where we've only now got the samples in that we really want and we're not repeating and chopping up the same thing over and over notice it's done this automatically for us it's put it on slice mode and it sliced it up for us we can use the same controls we use in logic to zoom in so i can hold command and use the mouse wheel and zoom in and see just the area we're working on which is nice especially when i want to dial this right in like that right if you're getting clicks and pops change your snap over to zero crossing and it will find a point of zero so it 
it won't pop and click when changing samples. So as long as we don't have a marker selected, we can now adjust the sensitivity overall. The minute it's at 100, the more we bring it down, the less of those transients selects all the way up at 100. It's not catching this transient here, but we could play this marker by selecting it and and we can hear that we don't need an extra slice in there. So now we have a MIDI track right here and that's got that sliced instrument on it for us. What I like to do is make the second tool up here the pencil and then if we hold command we can just draw a MIDI track in like that. And we're gonna duplicate our drum loop from before. So we've now got one bar. Press U over the whole lot and there we are. If we double click on this MIDI range now, we have our piano editor and it'll even show us from C1 all the way up to C3 those chops that we made already. And any one that we click on, I just kind of like that little tap, to be honest. Let's take out the loop. We've just got too much going on in the same bit of the high end and they all sound kind of similar. Let's have a look at the sampler and see what we can do to change that vibe up a little bit. Two things that I would look to maybe do here. Firstly, we can play around with the pitch and we can bring it up. And now we've got some different texture going on. Can bring it up excessively. Now, if we use the coarse pitch, this will put it up even more. And here we're going to get into an unusable territory pretty quickly. Well, that might work. Just going up three semitones there. That's kind of within a tuning region that works, right? Now, the other thing we can do is play around with the filter. And I think if we put this on something like a high pass, let's use the 24 dB edgy. Press S just to hear it in solo. And let's give it quite a bit of resonance to help it poke through. It's now arguably a pretty different sound to what we had before, right? And they stand out separately. I'm gonna use the pan and put this kind of up here in the right hand side would be hard pressed to listen to the original sample and this and say they were the same thing already. And on that note, because we're using entirely royalty free splice samples here, you could use a distributor like DistroKid to get your music onto all of the major platforms. I've been using DistroKid since as far back as 2015 and they get my music onto all the major platforms at a price an independent artist can easily afford. However, if you would like a discount, check out the link below in the description for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution today. Let's have a look at now using those same techniques and we'll bring the drum loop in, bring it down to a new channel. We'll drop it in the quick sampler and it will auto slice that up for us. And let's make ourselves a new channel. And like before, we could probably establish that we don't need the whole thing. We don't want to overwork ourselves. Let's give ourselves that kind of option to work with. And we'll know the kind of drum rhythm we want. We're after the kick, which should be here like that. That'll give us a little pattern there to work with. What we can do with peak cream is we can drive it. We can get some real character out of these drums, right? And do you know what I'm feeling right now with this? I like this on its own, but now we've got this drums and BPM in. I'm gonna get rid of that one. And I'm gonna stretch this out so it's a lot slower. And I want to take the quantize. I'm going to go with one eighth swing B in the inspector. I like that a lot. All right, fair to say we've got some drums going, right? Now, one thing you might want to do is what if I want to put loads of reverb on the snare? Well, there's something we can do now that we've already set that up that will allow us to do it. If we go back to the drums like we've got here, what we can do here is we can right click in our slice region. We can do create drum machine designer track. It's going to take all those slices and make a separate sampler for each one, but glue them all together. Watch. Now, what it does is it whacks the whole drum in in a MIDI track. We've already made our pattern, so we can just delete that, take Take our pattern and bring it down and we'll now have the same thing here okay cool beans the beauty now is we've got this little drop down arrow here they're all separate channels so if we press x to open up our mixer and we do the same thing we can find our snare that we're using right here for example 
and it actually adds a reverb bus for us, the space designer on there. I'm gonna go and put the RC48 on there in stereo mode. I just like that reverb a lot. Let's give it some top end that make sure it's max diffusion instant delay nice spread we don't want too much of the low end that should be roughly nice and and it's going to boss three there we go we've now got a nice verby snare haven't we all right so we've got some nice vibey sample drums what about working with an instrument sample? Let's go and grab something from our resources up here. Like this. Lovely. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you three ways we can work with this. One in the playlist, chopping it up and moving it around. Second in quick sampler, chopping it up. And then third, using drum machine designer for a sample. You'll see why. Okay, so let's drag this guy down and we can just give that a new channel and stick it below our loop right here. So first things first, this is a different BPM. It's offbeat. Let's fix that. Super simple way to do it. We could definitely guess that this is going to be about four bars long, right? It's kind of in that range. It goes a little over four and a half. The BPM says it was 100. We can just go to the bottom, hold option and drag it out. So it's four bars long, let go and boom, it's now going to be in time for us. Perfect. Perfect. That solves that problem for us right off the bat, doesn't it? Now, the nice thing about that is once it's in time, we can chop this up into smaller chunks. About there, looks like it would chop the sample up. I would count it out, but I'm not gonna bother. If we press T and I, we get the scissors. And if I hold option, we get a little plus option next to the scissors look. When I chop right there, it's gonna chop the entire sample in those increments, like so. Press T twice to get back to the pointer tool. Make sure we've got everything selected in Inspector, use our drop down menu. We're gonna do fade in just a couple and fade out just a couple. It's gonna put a quick fade on every single chop right there. And what we can do is move these out and we are just gonna bring in parts of the sample like this. And we can very easily just put it together like so. Liking it, liking it. And we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna duplicate that. And that last one there, we're gonna to go to inspect it in reverse and... How damn easy it was that. Feel free to steal that. One of the other really sick things about that is we can mess around with the pitch and timbre without actually messing up the whole thing as well. Let's take the little reverb one right at the end here, yeah? We'll select that. Again, we go into inspect it, let's do transpose. Let's make it go down minus three, and then we get this kind of vibe. All right, now we can do that kind of thing all entirely in the playlist and I sample like this loads. It's so, so versatile in Logic, it's kind of ridiculous. All right, so the other way that we can chop the sample up is the more traditional way. And let's drop it over in the quick sampler. Now let's just mute that quick one we made. So like before, we've now got this in the quick sample. We've got much smaller chops now. So we can really play around with how that goes. Now, if you haven't already adjusted the tempo before you drag it in, really useful thing here, switch this guy on, switch follow tempo on, it will find the tempo, match your chops to it. And again, we can put a MIDI region in here and we've got all our chops. And here we can figure out something out with all those individual chops, right? I'll do a bit of like a call and response, so. All right, so that's just a quick idea there, but we've got a completely different vibe. Let's use the drive to like crunch that sample up a bit. And I promised I was gonna show you using the drum sampler for another method, let's watch that. So we've got our loop already, like we did before with the drums, we're gonna right click, create a drum machine designer track. It's gonna do that same thing for us. And the benefit of doing this is we can individually adjust pitch ranges and you know how much each sample is affected. So let's have a look here. 
Okay, so this one, for example, we can just select this. We've then got the same settings for the order of the sampler, but just for that one slice. So I can go to the main look and we see it's just that tiny little slice. Go Q sampler detail. I can drive that one a little bit harder, but I could also make sure the pitch for that goes back to normal. And then we've now got a different melody. Right? That just allows you to be completely creative in that other way. I like to do this kind of thing in the playlist, like the first option we looked at, but this does give you extra flexibility in having filters set to everything. You could have it so one always filters or there's automation going on in each one, or you can send effects to individual slices like we did with the snare on the drum. So for this, I'm gonna stick with our original. So the last thing, let's try and get a bass of some kind under here and I... So what we're going to do with you is we're going to do the same thing and bring it into the quick sampler. And what we want to do here is find an individual note that we can work with. Okay, so we've got a note there. Now that actually sounds okay for the most part. Um, so that you guys can hear this, because if you're on laptop speakers or something daft, you're going to struggle. So I'm just going to put bash a compressor on there. So we absolutely need to look at changing the pitch of, so we need to look at just changing the pitch of maybe both these notes or the whole thing to bring it into context with the other sample. So let's just have a quick look at how we might approach that. So our original sample in this case, we know is on C sharp. Our bass is on A. That's gonna be what, four semitones. If we were to take this, open up the quick sampler, go to the course and pitch it down four. is pretty much there in key. And that, my friends, right there, is how you can sample anything in Logic. If you want to learn more about Logic music production, check out these videos next. There are hundreds on the channel, all in this kind of format, teaching you loads of useful techniques you can apply to your music in Logic Pro. Thank you very much for watching, and take care. I'll see you in the next one.